I've just been able to basic what I call bootstrap pivot how I'm spending my days and how I'm investing my time and hopefully helping some other people. And that's by, you know, really focusing on my business now, which is a, what I call aspiring CEO. And I'm, I'm coaching, mentoring CEOs in the role right now, or those who want a uh, second, what I call second tier or next level C suite executives who want to be, but what really ends up being every single time is it starts out with a business issue that we deal with, and very quickly we go to a life issue. And that's what I'm really enjoying now because I'm helping people become the CEO of their life. And that's what I really enjoy talking yeah. about. And you got such a passion for it. I've heard some of your stories, which we'll talk about. Mm -hmm. But um, being a seven-time CEO, yeah. What's the passion, the desire to help CEOs? Well, in small and medium businesses uh, in the industry, we need great CEOs right now. We really do. I mean, the, the backbone of the American economy is still the small business. And if you look at the studies and the, the statistics that are coming right now, we're, we're going through what they call this, this great transfer of wealth from the baby boomers to the next generation of of leaders and a lot of these next generation, which I, I can't keep track of whether it's Gen X or Gen Y, I, I'm not smart enough to do that. The next generation, they're not prepared. They're not passionate about the family business. They feel it's a burden or they've been put upon. But the fact is, is their nature abhors a vac vacuum, as we know. So there's a vacuum there of, of true visionary leadership that we need in place. And, and it's those people that I just get so much, you know, enjoyment and fulfillment out of dealing with, helping is those that are committed to growing their company, growing their people, and growing themselves. Is and, there, go ahead. Go ahead. No. I just say, is there a, and I love what you're saying because you're absolutely right. I agree with you 100%. Is there a common thread that you work with with these CEOs that, that I won't say it's a problem, but they need work on, or is it a multitude of things? Um, <laughs> uh, we'll share the link for your, for your listeners or your viewers. I, I've put together a little, little paper or whatever you want to call it, little report. It's called the 10 Secret CEOs Will Never Share. Nobody grew up wanting to be a CEO. Back in third grade, when they asked you, Steve, what do you want to be when you grow up? You said a fireman, a baseball player, whatever you said. Nobody in the classroom said CEO, okay? And if they did, they needed to go have a talk with that young person, okay? Because that's, that, that, that's a whole different viewpoint in life. So nobody grew up with it. I think I shared with you in one of our group, uh, group uh, breakouts a couple of weeks ago, McKinsey just did a, a survey for Horton. And, and of course, your listeners will know who McKinsey is, one of the, if not the top consulting firm in the world. Wharton is one of the top three MB, you know, MBA business schools in the world. They interviewed, they surveyed over 4,000 C-suite executives worldwide, global, global leaders, executives. 83%, I'm not making this number up, 83% felt they were unprepared for the role. Now these are these are executives that have been in business experience for decades. They've gone to the finest universities. They've gone to the finest MBA schools. They've been in their corporate training, and 83% of them felt they're unprepared for the role. Now, on top of that, 64% of them felt that their their current organizations, and these are the Fortune 1,000 companies of the world, are not supporting them in their role. Mm -hmm. Now, so you think, okay, what's that got to do with small, medium-sized businesses? Well, here, if reframe it, do the math. If the big corporations aren't preparing their leaders for the role, what are the small companies doing? They don't have the resources that the big ones do. So what we need right now is we read, really need a disruption in the coaching, mentoring capabilities or services for the small and medium-sized businesses. Because boards don't want to pay for it. Private equity folks don't want to pay for it. 
Mom and dad don't want to pay for it because they didn't need it. They grew the company for 25 years, mm -hmm. but the next generation does because they're not prepared for that. So we, if there's a need for a service and there's an audience, you know, and there's over 29 million businesses in America of 500 employees or less, all right, all you need to do is provide a service that the, the audit, that the, the user community can perform, provide, uh, can, you know, deal with. And, you know, you can't charge these people five, ten thousand dollars a month. That's that's not going to fly. So how do you provide those capabilities at a price that the market will bear? That's what we need right now is we need a disruption in that capability to to mentor these leaders and these executives. That's what we're trying to do in the yeah. corner office for H7. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you're doing it. So what comes to mind, Max, a question is, so a CEO comes in, learning on the fly is not a great way of doing this. And everybody comes in like that. And everybody gets smacked upside the head. Really? Oh, oh my yeah. God. I mean, you know, nobody's prepared for this. I mean, I, I, I took my first CEO role and I thought, hey, they got hired me to run the company. No CEO ever CEO is ever hired to run a company, Steve. They're hired to grow a company. And if you don't know how to organically grow a company, build your senior leadership team, and then provide the leadership for the organization, dealing with the board, dealing with the bank, dealing with the owners, it's a rough road to hoe. I know. I found out the hard way. Yeah. Okay. And I've talked to dozens, if not hundreds, of other CEOs that are all going nod and going, yep, yeah. yep, yep. But no CEO is ever hired to run the company. You've got a team in place to run the company. Your job is to grow the company and the people inside. So you're telling me that your experience will help me as a CEO because you've lived it. No, oh, absolutely. I mean, okay. if, 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 if you even consider hiring a coach or a mentor, why would you hire someone who hasn't done the job and failed? And I've failed. I mean, I, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. You know, my, my track record, or I don't know anybody who's spotless, but my track record is not spotless by any stretch <laughs> of the imagination, you know, and you learn a lot through those failures and those, you know, if, if, if a CEO, a coach hasn't laid awake at night on Thursday night, one praying and worrying about how you're going to make payroll Monday, Friday morning, why would you hire them to coach you? I don't understand that. I just don't get it. The great point is very logical. The question I have is, what's the difference between a CEO and an owner? And is there a difference? Could, necess not necessarily there is. Could be the same. Okay. Uh, but as sooner or later, the owners are going to want and going to have to transition because none of us have figured out how to beat death yet. <laughs> All right. So they're going to have to put somebody into place. Now, the majority of founders, and this has been, you know, the research has been done by much smarter people than I am that have found that the majority of founders are not the ones that take the company to the next level. I, I, have, I have this saying, and, and nobody's been able to dissuade me of it yet or prove me wrong, is that you can effort to a next level. All right, you, could, you can work your hind end off and just, just grunt it out and get to X level of revenue. The next level, and usually that's about $10 million. Anybody can get a company to 10 million, not anybody, but yeah. You can work hard enough over a couple of decades to get it to 10 million. 10 to 50 million dollars, that takes a whole different set of capabilities. And that's when owners usually have to transition all right, to somebody coming in that can lead that growth, put the infrastructure in place, build the team, scale it, scale the business to get to that next level. So in the audience, if somebody's an owner out there thinking about hiring a CEO, you're the guy to call. I can help them have a great conversation about okay. these are the things you need to look for and consider before you, you take that step. Yeah. Max, that's powerful. That is a million dollar answer right there to me because and it's probably more than that <laughs> in dollars for the company. And the second thing, any audience out there, the audience out there, there's CEOs that want to get better. That's another group of people you work with, correct? Absolutely. Because, um, and, and, you know, when we talked before, I say I focus on the first 18 months. Yeah. Nobody hires a new CEO January 1st. So you're coming yeah. into a stub year. So I just picked six months out of it. And you've got a 12-month 
runway to really prove that you can do the job. So I, I just throw the number out 18 months. It doesn't have to be 18 months. But if you're if you're not roar, rolling at the end of that 18 month period, that first full year in business, you know, chances are you're not going to get there as a CEO. It wasn't wasn't the right fit or you're not the, you don't have the right capabilities or, you know, lots of things could be the reason. But if you haven't, if you're not on, on, a, on a proven path of a trajectory after that 18 month time frame, uh, it's going to be very painful for the organization and for you. You're getting me excited. I want to be a CEO now. Okay. Because now I have somebody that. to go to. Yeah. I know yeah, I could. Now I know I can. We can do that for you. Yeah. So let me ask you, the C-suite, there's mm -hmm. CFOs, CIOs, and the, is the CEO the key to all that? Or can you help a CFO, because you said you go second level, and yeah. that can grow the company as well? Um, is there, or is it all the same? Well, um, I want to make sure I'm answering your question. Sure. Can I help a CFO that really wants to become a CEO yeah. package, position, present their capabilities and credentials, and then craft a vision for what the company would be like under their CEO leadership? Absolutely. And then could I help them for the first 12 to 18 months, put that plan into place and be successful at it? Yes, I could. All right. Now, can I help a CFO go get another CFO job? That's they don't want to spend the money for me. I mean, they, they've already got the capabilities. They're, they're, yep. the, the hiring committee there, the selection committee is looking for different capabilities than than what I bring to the table. Yes. All right. But if they want to make that that leap to the corner office, all right, and that's why I called it aspiring CEO. If you want to aspire to that corner office, all right, then I can help them absolutely. So this is internal. You're a CEO. You want to get better. You're an owner. You're bringing a CEO or want to get your CEO. It's all internal. You're not going to go, hey, CEO, let me get you from Apple to Google. Not that that would happen. You yeah. want to work with that company and the staff they have there, the C-suites, and let's yes. make this thing grow. Yes, I can help with that. Absolutely. Yeah, I, and I, I, I love your confidence. I, an well, audience, this is why I love this guy. He's yeah. done it. He knows it. Done it. Um. Regards every, to every time I became CEO, Steve, I was already coaching the sitting CEO. Now, for health reasons, or for lack of desire, or um, a, a crippling case of uh, imposter syndrome, or just not ready, you know, I would spend a year or two getting that that either the company ready to be sold, which we did a couple of times, or that sitting that CEO to be properly educated. I don't want to use trained. We're not training. We're not, you know, we're not talking about puppies here. They're properly mm -hmm. educated and, and focused so that they can successfully go back into the role and then go from there and grow the company and done that as well too. So. And you do this because it came with a question in my head is you do this in person and virtual. So I'm in San Jose, California. There's a company here you're working with. You'll fly out. I would assume or do you I have to? to? No, oh, you don't need to. Do Great. It all, I do it remotely. I mean, I've yeah. seen enough factories. I've seen <laughs> enough warehouse. You know, I don't, I don't need to see another one. Uh, and it's it, if there are operational problems, I mean, if mm -hmm. they're having supply chain problems or they're having quality problems, all right, that's not what I do. All right. There are, we have people in H7 who are really, really good at that kind of stuff. We got EOS implementers. You know, I'll, th I'll throw out a couple of names, Kevin Sabowski or Bill Duguay. Those guys are the ones you want to bring in for that kind of thing. If you've got problems with your inventory, we got B2B CFOs, we've got fractional CFOs. Those are the folks you want to deal with that, all right? But if, you're, if, if you've got a vision problem and you've got a problem with the CEO not being able to put a team together to do those operational you know, meet that operational requirements, that's where you might want to call Max Lambert. That's perfect, because that's where I wanted you to go so people can understand. I don't want people calling you going, hey, I've got, you know, China's not working with me. It's like, that's not what he does. He works with the people with the people. And I love it's virtual, because I yeah. know some people I've talked in the last four years or so that make the company pay them to fly out and spend a week there. Yeah, you're shaking your head. That's my first thought is, why don't you no. just jump on a Zoom and talk to people? Hey. I love it, Max. Man, I love how you do all this. And it's, I don't know anybody that does it, 
audience, I got to tell you, if you know somebody else who helps CEOs like this, send me an email. Let me know because I have it. I love this guy. You could tell because this is tough. This is not a sales guy at, at Google or, you know, a bookstore owner. This is CEO of multi-million dollar companies, correct? Yeah. yeah. So this is super important. Yeah. Well, we know you're a smart guy. Did any books help you become smart and understand this besides experience? You know, I am a, um, I was a student of business books early in my career. All right. But, but I, I, I transitioned more to mindset and if you want to call it self-improvement, whatever. Uh, and, and the book that really began me, started me on that journey was Wayne Dyer's book. You'll see it when you believe it. You know, because there are so many applications in life and so many applications uh, that you can use in business as well is that, um, you know, I, I, I was raised in Northwest Ohio in the born in the 50s, raised in the 60s. Uh, my, my parents were public school educators and ch children of the Depression. And we were poor, but we didn't know it because everybody around us was as poor as we were or poor. Yeah. All right. But. Money was always an issue, and you know that that mindset you get from that. And the other thing, because I actually had my mom as a school teacher every day for five years, Steve. Wow! Uh, so in the morning she was mom, and at school she was Mrs. Lambright. All right, and years of therapy and thousands of dollars, I'm still screwed up. But you know <laughs> that that mentality at the time, teachers were still seeing it as in in a position in the community that anything we did, my brothers, I have two brothers, I have two brothers, anything we did on reflect on them was, you know, you get punished at school, then you come home and get punished again. And then dad comes home, you get punished the third time. So it was, you know, <laughs> that mentality of, you know, <laughs> being fear-based, uh, you know, in reinforcement back then. I mean, you, you, you understand where you're, oh, you know, oh, things yeah. are different today than we we grew up with so you know uh the the mindset was I, I some things just didn't sit with me and i wanted to, i wanted to really explore that so a long answer to your question started with wayne dyer but my favorite book is still neville goddard's your faith is your fortune okay Amen. and it's, it's out in public domain right now anybody can read it anybody can pick it up and they'll find things they don't agree with but they will find things that really resonate I love that because my dad grew, grew up in the depression, him and his brother. And I used to hear stories like you did. <laughs> your story's great about your mom being a teacher. <laughs> I could just imagine. But you know no, what I love? No, you can't, Steve. No, you you're probably me, you right. <laughs> Good point. You And I'm glad you said that book about Wayne Dyer mindset because that's what you do as CEOs. Is it that big oh, part of yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. That, that, that little... Uh, report will put will put a link out there for yeah. you know the 10 secret ceos will never share every ceo every ceo unless they're a true sociopath and there's some that are but let's just say 98 percent, 99 percent, all have imposter syndrome it's the loneliest job in the world and when i say that to people they go ah you're being dramatic no i'm not it's the loneliest job in the world everybody that comes into your office Everybody that contacts you, everybody that emails you wants something from you. Mm -hmm. Time, attention, resources, pat on the back, a raise, day off, whatever it is. Everybody wants something from you. Everybody hangs on every word, every facial expression, every expression of body language, you know, Max walked around the plant day. He didn't talk to me. He must be mad at me. No, I, wasn't, I'm, no, I wasn't mad at you know yeah. Steve. You know, I wasn't even thinking about Steve to be honest. I was thinking about the problem we have with one of our clients. Didn't matter. Yes. All right. Okay. If I didn't walk around the plant every day, people came in and said, "What's wrong? Why aren't you out saying hello to everybody?" Okay. Now, I, you know, I I never ran a thirty thousand person organization i you know that's that's a whole different ball game we're not talking about that we're talking small and medium business mm -hmm. all right so 
doesn't matter how supportive your spouse or partner is. It doesn't matter how supportive your CFO is. It doesn't matter how supportive your board is, your senior leadership team. You are still on the other side of the desk that nobody else in the organization sits on. And you you're talking. From- yeah, go ahead. You see a completely different view of the organization that nobody else sees. It is truly the loneliest job in the world. Man, Max, that is so well said. I've never heard that. Kind of keeps me away from being a CEO. But if you taught me, I could do well. But and we're and we're right out of time here. And again, I could talk to you all day. And I know you guys can listen to them, audience, because there's a lot of good stuff coming out. Leadership is a word that comes to my head. Does that help all that you just mentioned? The best definition, you know, there are 10,000 leadership definitions. <laughs> yeah. My definition is, is a leader who takes a group of people someplace they wouldn't go on their own. A visionary is someone who sees opportunities that no one else sees. So a visionary leader is someone who sees opportunities that no one else sees and then takes those people, takes his people there to benefit from them. And that's who I really want to work with, Steve, our visionary leaders. You hear that, audience? You're a visionary leader. Please reach out to this guy. Reach out to me. And if you don't, I'm going to, no, I won't come after you. No. That's because I don't know who you are, but hope someday I will. Um, God, this has been great. Uh, Max, thank you so much for being on the show. That's I've great. learned so much about being a CEO. I can't wait to refer some people to you. Um, and in taking the time out, I know you're a busy guy. One thing I'd like to learn, you know so much, you've been through a lot. What's one tip you can leave the audience that may help them in their journey, maybe just as not as a CEO, but maybe just as a business person? No, here's the thing that 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 most people to realize don't realize and that I really enjoy, get the most satisfaction of, is that everybody is a CEO of their own life. If you're not, who is? All right? So that's our next discussion, Steve, is how to be CEO of your life. Because there is a process that we all go. None of us were sent here at this time to suck up other people's oxygen. We are here for a purpose. Every single one of us has a reason we're here. The creator, however you want to view that. And we're not going to get into that discussion or argument today. There's a reason you're here. All right. Now, I believe that reason is to some small way to make this world a better place. Each of us has a different way of doing that. Hopefully, I can help other, you know, younger leaders provide value, you know, in in their role. You're doing your servant leadership through your podcast and the way you do it. We try to help each other together in our groups in H7. You know, all of us have a way, a a method, a a pathway, if you will, to fulfill our purpose for being here. I call it leaving a legacy. All right. Can I tell you a quick story before we go? Yes. My my kids hate going to the movies with me because I will always sit through the end of the movie and watch the credits. All right. A- Oftentimes, there's a little Easter eggs in there, and, and sometimes they're really funny. But B, it really it really intrigues me and amazes me how many people are involved in making of a motion picture. Now, think about our life. We don't get to see the credits, but each of us leaves a legacy. Each of us has a trailer at the end. There's going to have a, be an impact of our lives after we leave. Did we actually impact, have measurable impact on somebody or somebody's? where we made their world a little bit better place? Did we leave the kind of legacy that we really want to? And it's very simple. It's three steps. You do, you teach, and you leave behind. And if you ever want to talk about how to really do that, Steve, have me back sometime after you've talked to all these other wonderful guests, and we'll talk about leaving a legacy. How's that? 